Hi, readers. It's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, Books Ink and Paper, and welcome to my July book haul. Still on the No Buy Challenge. Still haven't bought a book, but I do have some books to haul for you this month. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the last full month of the No Buy Challenge, which ends August 15th. I am struggling right now because I really want to order my August book of the month club selections. I have a lot of credits that have picked up over this no buy challenge. I have a lot of books that I want. It is getting harder though. Right now, I will not lie. It's getting harder. There's no, no question. And uh, by the way, to those who tried the no buy challenge and, and did not complete it without buying anything. I have no judgment around that. You did not fail. Michelle, <laughs> Michelle Lynn reads, I'm looking at you. You did not fail. You did what you needed to do and wanted to do, and you have free will and free choice at any time. So do not feel bad about that at all. None of you should feel bad. Okay. Let's talk about what I hauled digitally first. There was a lot of that. Uh, <laughs> Some of it I didn't get to read because I had too many things on hold at the same time. You understand this if you borrow from your library. I had borrowed Miss Morgan's Book Brigade. I did not get to that. I'm really sad by Janet Skeltian Charles. I will get to that at some point. I'm sure it just wasn't this month of July. Also borrowed on a whim. I didn't come here to make friends by Courtney Robertson, who was a contestant on the Bachelorette or the Bachelor series. And we used to watch this, my daughter and I, uh, and and I'm fascinated by it. And yet it's it's uncomfortable at times. Let's just say that. I really did want her firsthand perspective. I just didn't get to it. So I can borrow that again. No problem. It's always available to me. I borrowed George Washington's Rules of Civility and Decent Behavior, and I didn't get to that either. And I feel bad, George. I really do. But I'm going to get to that because I'm curious about it. And I borrowed The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. I did not get to that either. So those were my hoopla. In my Libby app from my library... In the month of July, I borrowed a couple of books that I didn't get to. So I'm going to start with those and then we'll talk about the ones I did get to. I borrowed The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, which I own, but I thought <clears throat> I might be able to get to that if I had it on audio. But then everything came in at once. You know how that happens. And I borrowed Funny Story which I have just a couple of days left to finish. I am currently reading Funny Story by Emily Henry. I'm not quite there yet. I think I'll finish it, but um, I'm a little bit worried because I only have four days, I think, five days left on it. Let's see. What does that have? It's due August 5th, and I am filming this on August 1st. So there you go. All right, and then I borrowed Sandwich by Katherine Newman twice. <laughs> This is my second go. I currently have it for 14 days on Kindle through my library. It is a most anticipated for me as well. And I have seen that she's going to be on PBS Book Club or book, PBS Talks Books or whatever it's called, which is on Facebook Live. She's going to be there in August, but it'll be recorded. If you follow them on Facebook, which I recommend that you do, uh, they interview authors typically once a month, and they're interviewing some pretty great authors that I'm following. So it's been really, really fun. Okay, let's talk about what I did haul and read from the library in the month of July. So the first, this is not my reading wrap up, because that'll be separate. I'm not going to tell you much about these books or how I felt about them. I'm just going to tell you that I hauled them. Sound good? Because this is a haul video. So I'm trying to keep those separate. <laughs> I hauled James by Percival Everett from my library via Libby on audio book. I hauled One Perfect Couple from my library, both physically from my local library where I live now and also on audio book. Just for the summer, I borrowed on audio so I could read it and listen to it when it was convenient for me because I was 
doing some things at that point that made that easier. The Mysterious Case of the Alperton Angels I hauled on Kindle from my library because I have the physical copy, but I also wanted to be able to look at it digitally as well. You know me, always got three different things going on. And Small Mercies by Dennis Lahane, I borrowed on audiobook also from Everand. And so we'll give you a wrap up soon about whether I finished these books and how I felt about them. But let's get to the physical copies that I have, which uh, are very unexpected. And again, I didn't purchase any of them. So that was fun. So since we're on this kick, let's start with the library I borrowed in the middle of the night or sorry, middle of the night by Riley Sager. This is his newest one. It, I asked my library to get it and they had no problems getting it. This is my old library where I used to live. And uh, so I'm super excited to have this. However, no, I have not been reading it. And it's going to be due to soon too. I just had too many books going on at one time when this came in. And I was struggling a little bit with it at the beginning. So I think I just need to give it some time. I need to have some quiet. It hasn't been really quiet for me recently. I've been working really, really hard. I've done some team facilitations back to back in July and just all day events and things. So it's been, my reading time has been different for me. And the Olympics, the Olympics, like I love the Olympics. Anyway, middle of the night for Riley Sager's newest one, uh, Missing Kid. I'm going to get to it though. It will it possibly be a book of the month club selection for me too, because it's there as well. And my problem with this August thing is that there's a book there that I really want. And yeah, it's hard. It's hard all of a sudden, you guys, it's hard. My daughter popped some books in my trunk when we were all together in July for some birthday celebrations. This is my youngest, who Megan, whom you've seen on some videos with me, who does not necessarily keep books. I don't know how that happened genetically, um, probably more uh, my mother's side, but um, it's okay. She doesn't keep books. It's fine. But she brought me three books that she thought I might like, and this one is the first, Colson Whitehead's The Underground Railroad. I have wanted to read this for a while. It won the Pulitzer Prize. It is billed by so many people as being a wonderful novel. It's interesting that it came to me this month because I'm also reading a book that is mm, tricky, tense, sad. Ugh. And The Lincoln Highway was also the same. Anyway, they say it's potent, devastating, and essential. This is about a young slave named Cora who lives on a cotton plantation in Georgia and she's coming of age to the place where she will now be more at risk by this, by the treatment of the slave owners, because you know what happens. She's, she's essentially on the cusp of womanhood is what it says. So, you know what that means. Cesar, a slave who's recently arrived from Virginia, urges her to join him on the underground railroad. And I believe she accepts and the, the journey for them is described in this novel that, I just really want to get to and look at these little tracks and it's just a great cover. Is it going to be difficult to read? Absolutely. Um, it also won the National Book Award, by the way. You can just see that now when I was looking at the cover. Long listed for the Man Booker Prize, winner of the Carnegie Medal for Excellence, <laughs> Chicago Tribune Heartland Prize. Holy cow. Holy cow, this book has gotten so much praise. So I I worry a little bit about books that are super overhyped, but I don't think this one is super overhyped. I think this one is receiving a lot of accolades and I think it's well, well done and I would like to read it. And then The Book Eaters by Sunni Dean was a surprise to me uh, and a delightful surprise. Look at this cover. This is, they are they are made out of books. And the reason that's true is because in this book, this fantasy speculative fiction novel, which was also kind of billed by Goodreads and Book Riot and NPR as a book of the year in 2022. This is about people who eat books. And when they eat books, they consume something in the book that then changes them in some way so that they consume, for example, a, they live on the Yorkshire Moors, by the way, which I love any book set on the Moors bring it on to me. But if they eat a book about food, then they are 
probably retaining the taste of the food after they eat it. Spy novels are a peppery snack. Romance novels are sweet and delicious. Eating a map can help them remember destinations. And for children, when they misbehave, they're forced to eat the dictionary pages. I can't wait to find out what happens here. Yeah, it's, I don't want to know more than that. I think it's going to be good. I haven't looked at ratings. I hadn't even really paid that much attention to that book. So I'm excited about that one. And I'm excited about this one too. A Short Walk Through a Wide World by Douglas Westerbeek. Quite a stunning cover as well. I love it. It's a pretty good sized book. And this is about a young girl, Aubrey Torval, Paris, 1985. She's nine and she comes across a wooden puzzle, which she then throws over the fence because she's not going to keep it. And then it shows back up for her in her backpack that night. And she starts then at that dinner table with her family that evening when she discovers this, she starts to bleed to death. I know. So then she realizes medical treatment is not working. So she runs away, I think, but realizes that as long as she's moving, she's okay. She's still alive. She can't stay anywhere for more than a few days. Hence the short walk through a wide world. This reminds me strangely of the invisible life of Addie LaRue, not because those plots are in any way together. <laughs> but also just because of the movement going from place to place to place. And the setting was older, you know, in, in Addie's first time line. So I would really enjoy reading this, I think. And I love this cover. There's some, there's the Eiffel Tower and there's some, you know, you can just kind of see all the representation of all the places she might go. Yes, please. Megan's given me a great stack to take a look at. One day a book came into my mailbox and I did not order it. And I was a bit shocked. I opened it up. I thought maybe it was an ARC. There was no publisher attached to it. So it couldn't have been an ARC. I didn't get a notification that I won anything on Goodreads uh, giveaways. So I was puzzled. So I said, finally, to my partner, Lisa, did you buy a book for yourself? And she said, no, I bought a book for you because you've done so well on the no buy challenge. Isn't that sweet? So I now have Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. She went to my biblio list and picked something off of it that she thought that I might want, as well as something that I had read another book by this author. So she did some research and this was what she picked out. I love this cover. Absolutely stunning. And the reason I love this uh, premise is because it's set in Louisiana, um, in a small town that's fictional, I think. Pretty sure I've never heard of this town. And it just seems like a really great setting for this particular book. So this is, it says for fans, which is also what drew me in, fans of Verity, A Flicker in the Dark. And uh, both of those were very good books that I enjoyed and devoured. This is about murder, obsessive love, and the beastly urges that lie dormant within us all. And it's set in Bottom Springs, Louisiana, which again, I do not think is a real town, but there are a lot of towns in Louisiana named Springs because there are springs and librarian Ruth Cornier has always felt like an outsider here. Her father is a Baptist fire and brimstone preacher. So this is a community of people who are God fearing and literally fearing God and everything that can harm them. Right. Unfortunately though, the only thing that they fear more than God is the devil. And there are myths that haunt the area story of the low man, which is a vampiric figure and something is discovered. I think someone is murdered perhaps. And she and her friend then join together to try to, I guess, change the situation or solve the murder or just survive this crazy, crazy place. Sounds absolutely delightful. I think it would be a fast read. And the thing is, with all these readathons that I have at my fingertips right now, I can, I'm just, I feel like oh, I could just read all the books. And hopefully, I'll have some span of time this month to read a little bit more because it does seem like this month is a little less busy work wise than 
the last two months have been. So we'll see. I love my work. I really, really do. It's just some days I'm exhausted at the end of the day. So thanks for watching readers. Let me know what you hauled in the month of July. Let me know if you have borrowed any of these titles or what you borrowed from the library. If you want me to know, tell me what you think I would like. Tell me all the things that I need to know to be able to continue to read great, great books. I thank you all for your support. I thank you all for your ideas. All of you who don't buy books, kudos to you. Thank you for cheering me on. Thank you for reminding me that I don't have to buy books in the way that I did before. And as always, happy reading. Bye. Mm -hmm.